Assalamu alaikum. This presentation is on the classic version of the rhomboid flaps as first described by Limburg in the 1940s. We'll go through the design and the applications in head and neck reconstruction. Rhomboid flaps are fairly popular and versatile. Over the years, there have been many modifications and therefore variants of the technique. It's a family of different techniques uh, including at least half a dozen members. In this presentation, we'll go through the original description by Limburg, the double Limburg, and the triple Limburg. In the next presentation, we'll go through the other versions, including the Deformental flap, the Webster flap, the Quabas modification, either single or double, and the Diamond flap. In the 1940s, Limburg came up with the original idea of transforming the shape of any lesion, be it a square or a circle or a triangle, into a rhomboid shape. A rhomboid is an equal size parallelogram. A special type of the rhomboids has the angles like 60 degrees and 120 degrees. For that reason, the short diagonal of the rhomboid is also equal to the sides of the parallelogram and that's the uh, advantage of having this rhombus is the ease of creating an identically si sized and angled uh, flap that can be transferred easier into the defect. So starting with an irregular lesion you mark out the safety margin around it and usually end up with a shape much like a circle. And outside this circle, the uh, rhomboid is drawn. And that would entail losing some healthy tissues at the angles of the rhombus. A rhombus has a 60 degrees here and a 120 degrees there. And you can see it as two equilateral triangles on top of each other because the short diagonal would bisect the 120 degrees angle into 60s, 60 degree above and below. And this equilateral triangle will have not only the sides as equal, but also the base formed of the short diagonal. The steps in creating the flap is to extend the short diagonal bisecting the 120 degrees into uh, an equal length to one of the sides or to the short diagonal itself and then draw a line from there parallel to the adjacent side of the lesion and this line would also have the same length like the first limb and like all the uh, sides of the parallelogram so this two uh, rhomboids will be almost identical and can be transferred easier uh, from the donor side into the defect. Um, the donor side is then closed up primarily. Once the rhomboid is drawn, you would have four different options for the position of the flap to choose from. You would extend the short diagonal on one side and you can have a flap above and a flap below. And the same would apply to the other side. You still can have two other uh, rhomboid flaps that can be drawn for the same rhomboid defect. And the question is which one you are going to choose. And this would be dictated by the direction of the uh, relaxed skin tension lines and as you can see here the final outcome of uh, the repair would be a broken line with four limbs and you would try and um, sit these um, lines as much as possible within relaxed skin tension lines like in here and that would entail choosing one particular uh, rhomboid over out of the four possible ones. The technique itself is straightforward. 
you would draw the 60 degrees angle and mark the rhomboid, extend the short diagonal to the outside equal to the lengths of the sides of the rhomboid and have the second limb parallel to one of the adjacent sides. And you would have the rhomboid flap to close up a rhomboid defect. The first suture would have to be in the angle here between the apex of the flap and the apex of the wound and that would carry most of the tension followed by the two sutures at the angles of the rhomboid and then you could have the other sutures in place. The primary defect is now closed by the rhomboid flap. The secondary defect where the uh, flap was uh, raising from would be closed by uh, primary sutures. And you have a large uh, lesion or if one side of the lesion is much longer than the other side so it ends up being an elliptical shape or an oblong rather than a circle you can use two Lemberg flaps rather than one you draw a parallelogram around the lesion with a width to a length size of one to two and then divide this parallelogram into two rhomboids equal sided rhomboids and have flaps on either side of the rhomboids to fill up the defect. So the first thing is to have the parallelogram with a width to length ratio of 2 to 1. And then divide this parallelogram into two equal sided rhomboids. Draw the short diagonal from the first rhomboid, extend the line to the outside equal to the length of any side of the rhomboid, and do the same on the other side. You have now two flaps in opposite directions on the two sides of the parallelogram. And once the lesion is excised, the flaps can be raised and then transposed in opposite directions to fill up the uh, defect. The primary defect created by the uh, raising the flap will be closed uh, directly by primary sutures like above and below and you have the two flaps on top of each other to fill up the original parallelogram defect. And if the lesion is very large and cannot be covered by a single or a double rhomboid, you can actually design three Limburg flaps around the lesion. This time, you, we don't draw a rhomboid outside the circular defect. We actually draw three small rhomboids within the circle defect itself and then extend from the uh, short diagonal of each of these three small rhomboids the first limb of the flap and 60 degrees from it the second limb is drawn all equal inside uh, in their uh, lengths to the sides of the three rhomboids uh, so you've created three small rhomboid flaps around the circle all uh, going into the same direction and then they can be transposed to fill up the center of the defect where they meet in the midline and the, in the midpoint and from there you can see the extension of the uh, this line is the secondary defect closed in a straight line this will demonstrate it so you keep the circular shape of the defect draw three diagonals meeting up at 60 degrees in the center of the circle and then start extending the short diagonal of each of these three rhomboids to the outside and 60 degrees from it you draw the second limb and now the three rhomboid flaps are marked these are the three 
um, boys drawn within the circle rather than outside it. Once the flaps, once the lesion is excised, you can raise up the flaps. And these flaps would meet up in the, in the middle of the primary circular defect. So they close up the circular defect and you can see the um, secondary defects are closed up in a straight line by direct suturing. Rhomboid flaps are fairly popular because they are versatile and easily adaptable. And there are many variants with different uh, angles and dimensions to suit different uh, surgical uh, defects. They are mainly used in the cheek or the temple, uh, sometimes on the chin and on the neck. They cause minimal adjacent tissue distortion and you can predict fairly well the shape and the position of the final scar. On the other hand, they tend to cause a, an outstanding cutaneous deformity, like a dog ear deformity in one of the corners of the uh, scar. And they also, because they are formed of a broken line of four di different segments, one or two of these segments may not uh, align well with the relaxed skin tension lines. Uh, but the other thing is that to create a rhomboid defect, you sacrifice some normal tissue around the circular tissue. By this, we come to the end of this presentation on the classic version of the rhomboid flaps, the Limburg description. And the next presentation will go through the other variants of the rhomboid flaps. Salam alaikum.